Hi guys, it's Kath. Today, I have a really special video for you. We're going to make this working miniature stand mixer. So many of you have asked for this tutorial, and I'm happy to finally share it. We're going to go through several techniques today, including 3D modeling, soldering, and simple electrical work. This is a really fun project, and you get a beautiful miniature at the end. Before I get started on the design of the mixer itself, let me introduce you to an amazing product from the sponsor of today's video, AnchorMake. This is their newest 3D printer, the M5C. It's an entry-level printer that's perfect for beginners. The AnchorMake M5C is a fast printer that ensures both speed and quality throughout the printing process. It prints at a max speed of 500 millimeters per second. The printer itself came packaged really well. Everything is snug in its place and the assembly instructions are very straightforward. The toolkit comes in a super handy box and looks to be a very high quality. We also have a filament holder. The printer itself comes in two main pieces, the top frame and the printer bed. This is the top frame that has the printing nozzle. And this is the print bed. And that's it. It's just a few pieces, so assembly is a breeze. To put it together, I first lay down some packaging foam on my desk so I don't scratch up the machine. Lay the frame down on the foam. Then remove this back plate from the bottom of the printer bed. You can see the two openings where the frame will slide into. Then simply slide it onto the frame. Use the included bolts and the allen wrench to attach these in place. Then simply clip in the connections into their slots. Put the back plate back on and you're ready to stand your printer up. Next, turn the printer around and clip this wide black wire into the bed base. Then grab the filament holder and screw that on. Lastly, turn this printer back to the front and attach the filament tube. And this is the tube that's sticking out from the nozzle. Just push this end through the hole at the top of the filament holder. Clip it in and we're done. It's super easy assembly. Plug in the power and she's ready for any project we want to create. Once you have the machine all built, it looks really simple and very clean. There's one big play button, a USB-C port, and not much else besides a power button. Just looking at it, you can tell it's very simple to use. At first, I was concerned that it was a bit too streamlined. What if I needed to do something manual, like preheat my filament, move the nozzle to clean the plate? Well, that's where their app comes in. This printer is meant to be used through the Anchor Make app. You can view the temperature, how long a print will take, control the movement of the nozzle, and there is even this model library. These are preloaded designs that you can click and then your printer will make them right away. It's different from what I'm used to, but I love controlling everything from my phone. There's no SD cards or USB drives or any wires to mess around with. The app's user interface is super clean and very easy to read. You just have the essential information and not anything you don't need. Now that we have the printer set up, let's create our design for the stand mixer. We'll be using Tinkercad, which is a free and beginner-friendly website. The first thing I do is grab a cylinder and turn it on its side. Stretch it out so it's a bit longer. Then grab a sphere and place it on one end. Take another cylinder and place it below the sphere. Then take another sphere and place it on the other end to round out the back. This creates the main structure for the mixer head. Then take another cylinder and shrink it down. Turn it on its side and place it on the front end of the mixer head. For the base, take a cylinder and flatten it out. Grab this light blue half circle and stretch it out. 
Attach it to the flattened cylinder to create the bottom of the base. Take an invisible cylinder and cut a shallow circle groove as a place for a mixer bowl to sit. Then take a purple cone and place it above the smaller side. Put this parabola shape slightly above the cone to create a more gradual slope. Then place the cylinder on top of that to complete the base structure. Duplicate the cylinder and place it right above this one attaching to the bottom of the mixer head. Then take another cylinder and turn it on its side. Flatten it. Then stretch it down so it's more of an oval. Connect it to the mixer top. This is going to be the internal hinge that locks into the base. Grab another invisible cylinder and turn it on its side. Use it to cut away the bottom of this area of the mixer head that will connect to the base. We need this area round so the mixer head can move up and down. To ensure this fits perfectly into the base, duplicate this entire top area. Turn it invisible. Line it up with our base. Combine the two to cut away all the excess material. I love doing this trick. This will allow the mixer top and the base to sit flush together. Then I duplicate the mixer head one more time so I can split it in half. The way I do this is using an invisible cube to cut away the top area on one piece and the bottom area on the other piece. Here are the two pieces. Then I use invisible shapes to cut out the inside. You want to make space for a battery, wires, power switch, and motor. We also need a little slot on the side of the mixer head so there's a spot to reach the power switch from the outside. Cut a hole through each so we'll have an opening to complete the hinge. This is where we'll be putting in a nail to create the hinge. I also added a hole in the back connecting the top and the base. This is where I'll be adding a removable screw so you can access the battery to change it. Okay, so now we have the basic structure of the model. Of course, I went back in and fine-tuned all the details just to make sure everything was to scale and that all my openings fit all my electrical components. That took me days and days to work out and I won't bore you with those details. Just remember that you can take your time with this and make this look exactly how you want. Let's print this out. First, I'll export this as an STL file. Then, I open up the Anchor Make app on my computer to use their slicer. You can use any slicer that you like, but I want to test out their software along with the printer. Just drop in your model and have the program prepare it for you. And for those of you that are new to 3D printing, a slicer is basically just software that cuts or slices your design into layers. Then your printer can read those layers and know how to print your design layer by layer. Select your machine and it'll start. You can also just click the big play button on the machine to do the exact same thing. And if you tap it once while the print is in session, it'll just pause your print. One thing I love about this printer is that it automatically syncs up to my phone. I open the app and I can see exactly what's happening. For example, I can see now that the nozzle and the print bed are heating up. This is so fast and I actually printed this same model about four times faster than my previous printer. And yet the quality is just as good. This is the top half of the mixer head, the bottom half, and this is the base. As usual, the first thing I do with the finished print is remove all the supports. Clipping off all the supports takes time, but it's super important. Now that we have our prints, let's start on electrical. 
I'm a big fan of scavenging for parts, so we'll be doing that here with this battery holder. I'm sure most of you have these lying around. It has a power switch, wires, screws, and metal plates that we can use. So I just unscrewed this holder to take it apart. Make sure to save the screws. Then I pull out the switch, the wires, and the metal plates. Snip off a portion of these metal strips to get quarter inch lengths. We'll need two of those. Let's glue these inside our mixer. To glue metal, I always use JB Well Epoxy. It's a two part epoxy where you just mix equal parts black and white. Then add a drop inside the cavity of the top half of the mixer head. Place a piece of the metal plate here. This is the area where the battery will go. Do the same on the other side. Together, these two plates will touch both sides of the battery and help us create a closed circuit. While that dries, let's get the wires off the power switch. You can just cut them off, but I like to use a soldering iron to melt the connection away and they'll fall off. This is just to make sure I don't break anything. Then you can glue the switch onto this area. Again, I'm using JB Weld to attach it. Once those pieces are firmly glued into place, it's time to solder some wires. Let me show you how this will all work. This is the motor that we'll be using. It's super tiny, but it's quite strong. It comes with a red positive wire and a black negative one. We'll be powering using one of these small coin batteries. Let me show you how that works. Just place the black one on the negative side of the battery and the red one on the positive side. With the wire on each side of the battery, the motor turns on. To install the motor, solder the black wire to the metal plate closest to the power switch. The easiest way I found to do this is to add some melted solder onto the plate first. Then add the wire and remelt the solder to connect the two. It's tricky working with something so small, so be careful here. Then I connect the red wire to the middle prong of the power switch. Almost done. Just one last wire. Cut a small section of the wire that we scavenged and cut off the plastic tubing on the ends. We'll solder one end to the other metal plate and the other end to the front prong on the power switch. Then you can slip in a battery making sure the negative side is where the black wire is connected. We're essentially creating a circuit that we can close and open by flipping the switch. When the switch is here, this prong doesn't have a wire so the circuit is open and no electrical current can reach the motor. However, when you move the switch up, it closes the circuit and powers on the motor. Once it all functions as expected, you can glue the motor into the bottom half of the mixer head. Then you can join these two pieces together. I added a hole in the back of these pieces so I can use a little screw that we took off the battery holder to connect them together. If you find that the front area starts to pull away as you tighten the screw, loosen your screw. Or you can just add a small drop of super glue to the front. Now that we have the main engine of our mixer completed, let's add some color. It's hard to pick a color for this mixer because it looks beautiful in pretty much any color. I chose to spray paint it this beautiful turquoise to match this rolling cart that I printed. You can also use spray paint, acrylic paint, gel polish, airbrush paint, whatever you have and whatever is easiest for you. For the hinge, I'll be using these little pins that I got from some dollhouse hinges. They're tiny little nails that I never actually use for door hinges. Add some epoxy to the end and push one into each side of the mixer. 
Contrary to what I initially thought, these pins don't actually need to touch in the middle. And the hinge actually works way smoother if the pins don't touch. As long as the pins are glued on each side, you're good to go. If you don't have these pins, you can also use some wire. Next, let's make the mixing bowl. The bottom of the bowl is just an upside down paraboloid shape. Above that, we need a cylinder for the middle area. Then right above that, I'll use a half sphere. Turn it upside down and place it right above the cylinder. At the base, add a short cylinder so this bowl has a flat surface that I can sit upright on without tilting over. To cut out the inside, first combine your top shapes. And duplicate that and turn it invisible. Put this in the middle of your bowl and use that to cut out the inside. For the handle, follow my tutorial on the Smeg kettle that we created. I use black filament to print this piece because we'll be painting in chrome and black is a way better base color for that. Again, I slice it using the Anchor Make Slicer and then hit print to send it to my machine. This prints beautifully and just took a few minutes. Cut off the support and it's ready for paint. We'll be using a similar finishing technique on all the components so let me go back to the mixer itself. I add a coat of clear gel polish for a super smooth glossy finish. This fills in all the paint layers and gives the model an enamel look. Make sure to cure the polish under UV light to harden it. For the bowl, I first paint on a layer of no wipe gel polish to get a smooth finish. After curing, you can brush on a chrome finish. And I love using this chrome powder for that effect. Make sure to do this for the outside and the inside. This is my favorite way to get a chrome finish. We have one last piece to create before adding on final accents. Let's make the beater. I'll be making the normal beater that comes standard in many mixers. So the first thing I do is find a black and white image of that beater. If you can't find one that you like, you can always draw your own. Once you have that, convert it to an SVG file like I showed you in my Chrome Silverware video and then import it into Tinkercad. This is a really neat Tinkercad trick. Shrink it down and turn it right side up. I make it thicker to give my beater a little body. Then grab a paraboloid shape and place it at the bottom center. Add some support and it's ready to print. This one prints extremely fast and only took about 3 minutes. Once it's printed, cut off the support. Then paint on some gel polish to smooth out the finish. I finished this piece in gray to give it a realistic look. Lastly, just drew a small hole at the base of the beater. Add some epoxy or super glue and install it on the post of the tiny motor. Be very careful here. You don't want to get any epoxy or glue on any part of the motor other than the post. That could cause the motor to stop spinning. For the final accents, I'll be using the silver tape. Cut a very thin strip and wrap it around the seam where the two halves of the motor head meet. Cut another thin strip and wrap it around the area right above the motor. Finish the mixer off with the final touches of black paint and you're done! These final details really help the mixer come alive.
This was such a fun project and I hope you enjoyed it. I love being able to take miniatures to the next level with 3D printing, functional parts, electrical, all of that. 3D printing is no longer the stuff of science fiction and it's become easier than ever before to get started. This Anchormate M5C is the perfect machine for beginners. The 500mm a second FASMO is excellent, as it remarkably reduces printing time compared to previous settings. And you're also not limited to just miniatures. I actually love using it to print functional models that make my daily life easier and more organized. It's super fast while maintaining a high printing quality at the same time. I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.